Hi, this is Michelle from Simply Scaife Handmade. Today we're going to take a look at a quilt design that's commonly called the clamshell design and talk a little bit about how to make our quilt motif fit inside our quilt boundaries. The clamshell design is basically half circles that span across the bottom of the quilting area and then they overlap on top of each other. If you can see from here, maybe it looks better this way, we have little half circles that fit right along the very base of our border. And then we've come above that and in between the two lower half circles we have started another one. And with this design, you, you really want them offset like that. They look like little clamshells laying on the beach. When you're on an end like this, a partial or a half circle works just fine. It kind of falls off the edge of the quilt space, and that's completely fine. That's what it's meant to do. Now let's talk about the quilt design a little bit. When I look at my quilt and the space that I am going to work with, my personal preference is always to make my quilting space around two inches, but no more than three. So the gauge that I like to work with when I'm quilting a quilt is between two and three inches. And that means top to bottom, side to side, no matter which design I'm working on, straight lines or curves, I really want there to be no less but no than two inches, but no more than three between the layers of my stitching. That's my personal preference. I like that gauge because I like the texture it adds to a quilt, but the soft pliableness that it leaves. When we looked at this one here, the crosshatch, I like the space it gives. I like the pucker that a two inch design leaves. And that's my personal preference. Some people really prefer their quilting to be closer together and that's fine. It will add a little more stiffness, a little more body to your quilt. When you get to three to four inches, your quilts are going to be a lot softer. It'll have a more pillowy effect on it. And like I said, make sure first of all to check your batting and be sure that your batting is okay with a larger uh, quilting distance. Most quilting can go four, sometimes six inches between your stitches. Be sure to check the label on your quilting, uh, the quilt batting that you choose. My personal preference is around two to three inches. I kind of like to stay in that range. When it comes to marking my quilt, one thing that can really give you a problem is trying to decide how to make that fit. How do I make this little half circle fit inside this square? This, this length of uh, quilting space is about 16 and a half by four. So it's about 16 and a half wide and four inches high. Knowing that I like to use a two inch gauge, I had to come up with a half circle that was going to fit in there and, and really try to fill the space as much as possible, leaving a good boundary and a good guideline. When I mark quilts, there are a lot of wonderful templates out there that you can simply purchase, lay on your quilt, and, and trace from. And I do have some on hand and I don't mind using them. But I'm a frugal kind of quilter and I like to simply um, think outside of the box and use what I have around the house. Some of my quilting templates are simply designs I've drawn and cut out of cardstock or cardboard and I just lay them on here and trace them. Other things are everyday items. For example, this clamshell, I just used my old can a canning ring. This is a small mouth jar canning ring. Um, I don't know if you can see, but inside there, there are two little black lines that I kind of put on there and that was just my reference dot. So that when I laid this on here, on my fabric, I could say that's about halfway. So I laid, I started in the center. I like to start the very beginning of my quilt design in the very center of my space. Uh, when I work a quilt, I don't mark the whole thing at one time. I'm a mark-as-you-go quilter. There's a couple reasons. Um, if I mark the entire top of the quilt and then roll it up and work on it, two things can happen. One, my marking design might fade. So I've done all that work and I can't see it anymore. 
and I have to mark it again anyway. The other thing that sometimes happens is our marking products uh, stain or damage our quilt or for example I often use a chalk marker to mark my designs. If I've rolled the fabric it may have smudged and marked in a place I didn't want it to be. So in general I mark as I go. For the purpose of this sampler I went ahead and marked the entire space as you can see here, I've marked the space with the clamshell design already so that I can just go ahead and work. And that's because this is a small area. If I was on a large quilt frame, I would start at the very bottom or top of my quilt, whichever one I'm starting at. I would measure from side to side and find the center of that quilt piece. And I would make my first mark in the center. So I lay it down, trace it gently, and scooch over. The clamshell design needs to touch and bump each other on the edges. So then we just move over and mark as we go. As you can see, I have stitched three of the little humps on the clamshell design. When it's time for the second layer, I kind of go back to that first middle one and the one beside it. And I want to place those two little black marks that I made right on the center bump of the lower clamshell and trace it there. And that gives me this little, I think it looks like a horseshoe crab on this design right here. And I just keep doing that across the edge. Again, I move up and mark from there. When I mark a quilt, I start in the middle, I work one direction, I come back to the middle, and I mark across the other way. And then I just move up one level and again, I mark in one direction, I come back, and I mark the other way. And I personally would mark two or three rows of the quilt design before I started working. Since I'm using a hoop and I have a small space, I've gone ahead and marked the entire three rows. About three rows fit in this space on this quilt. So the few things to remember. Measure how long and how high see about how the design fits and kind of decide your personal gauge. Do you like tight, tight quilting? If so, you could make these smaller. If you liked it bigger, you could simply make your hoop larger. It's a matter of personal preference and how stiff you like your quilt. Again, uh, when we work on a quilt, we want to put it in the hoop. We want to have plenty of give when we work on our quilts. We don't want this in here really tight. Tight is for embroidery, loose is for quilting. Make sure you have a thick quilting frame, not an embroidery hoop. Be sure you have some cotton embroidery thread, a sturdy needle, a comfortable thimble, a pair of scissors. Make sure you're sitting with good posture, that your quilt is on a work surface that lets your arms stay bent and you, your wrists be relaxed and comfortable. You're not wanting to put strain on your neck or on your shoulders by slouching over. You want to be able to see your work well. When I personally quilt, I quilt toward myself. So on a design like this, which goes side to side, I would turn my hoop this angle, and I generally will start quilting at the center, and I will quilt toward myself and move the hoop as I need to. Remember when you're quilting um, straight lines you can load quite a few stitches on a needle but when you quilt a circle you really need to quilt just one or two stitches at a time so that you can continue that angle and it doesn't come out all clunky. So I would work and turn it as I need to to make sure that my designs are curving correctly. The key is not to have the most stitches are the tightest stitches. The key is to have stitch consistency. So as we quilt, we simply want to make sure that our tension stays relaxed and comfortable, that our stitches work toward being the same distance apart and the same width. If you have any questions about our design for this week or about quilting in general, please leave me a message in the comment box or send me an email at simplyscafe at yahoo.com. Thanks for viewing. Now let's go stitch something beautiful.